As we wait for our branch director to get back to us, you can see our air is starting to be depleted. Again, there are no meter changes. But did you see that? Our heads up paper changed. The paper on the left, which is for the fluorine atom, changed from a pink to a yellow. And the paper on the right, which is for pH, changed to red, which indicates an acid environment. So we have, in this case, a fluorine ion is present, and we have a, a very acidic environment in the air. This now has become a red light situation, and the actions are immediate withdrawal, because this is dangerous. When we go to the information that the uh, branch director gave to us, we can see that this is uh, 1052, and this is hydrogen fluoride. This is an anhydrous form of it, which makes it even more dangerous. But what we have here is a colorless gas or a fuming liquid when it's released above 67 degrees Fahrenheit. If you recall, our scenario was at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have something that's turned into a vapor very readily. When we look at the vapor pressure for this material, we see that it is 783 millimeters of mercury, which anytime it's going to be above 68 degrees Fahrenheit, this is going to be a liquid that turns into a gas fairly rapidly. So this is going to be airborne material as indicated by our heads-up display with the changes in our indicating paper. Also, when we look at our smart charts, we can go through and kind of figure out what our action should be based upon the material. We now know it's hydrogen fluoride, but this is, name is not found in the flammable name clue box in the smart charts. When we look at the next box, we see that it is the first name of a corrosive gas because of hydrogen. So we know that this is a corrosive gas clue, and that's going to help us with how we should proceed with tactics. So when we go down the physical and chemical property box again, we see that this is a very corrosive acid. We're going to be looking for pH indicator paper changes to red, and F paper changes to yellow. And again, when we look at exposure routes, this is a material that is not just corrosive and poisonous. It also causes big changes in our body systems when we get exposed. So not only bone changes and changes of calcium in the, in the blood of the responder, but this is a very dangerous material. So going through the chemical and physical properties, just a quick size up and verification of this material to uh, rule out any of the dangerous qualities in the red box material. We look at molecular weight, it says it's 20, and our red box material says the vapors are heavier than air. Well, this is not the case. Anytime it's less than 28 or 29 molecular weight, it's going to rise in air. And when we look at the R gas D data, which helps um, figure out whether a gas will rise or sink in air, the data is 1.86 in the electronic version of the NIOSH book. But this is incorrect. The correct figure should be 0.69. So this is a real good lesson for all responders that not all data is accurate. Now the book by NIOSH is accurate, but the electronic version here is not. So that's why verification is so important. Also when we look at the flash point, this material does not have a flash point. So none of those uh, material things like LEL and UEL and flashpoint and flammability apply here because hydrogen fluoride does not burn. We also see that its IP is 15.98 electron volts. So that tells us that our IP uh, will, is not going to work with our PID, our photoionization detector, or will it work with the flame ionization detector because this does not have hydrogen and carbon in the formula so it does not burn. So those parameters aren't going to help us much. Uh, we know it's very toxic, IDLH is 30 parts per million, but the PID is not going to help us determine this. And then also we know that from our radiation meter, this is not going to be a radioactive material because there are no readings. So the big hazard, again, is a corrosive material. It's airborne, and also the fluorine ion present makes this not only corrosive and poisonous, but it's also a deadly potential situation. 
So when we go back, we're going to uh, immediately withdraw from this scene because of the red light indicators. So a quick check of your partner shows that his pH paper on his right uh, side is also red and his uh, fluorine paper on the left is also yellow. So that verifies what your heads up indicators also say. You also see that our red light is starting to blink, so we're starting to run out of air. So we need to get out of this area quickly. At this point, we're completely depleted of air and we're starting to run out. As you look back, you take one last check of the scene and you see that that the placard is on the truck and it's time to leave the area. So your big thoughts at this point are obviously to think about your emergency decontamination and make sure that you do that in a quick basis. So a hose line and no setup would be taking place at this time. You have a, a lot less air and it's uh, depleting quickly. So a recap of this incident is simply that you have an unknown situation. Smart chart page number five is going to help guide you through this. You played it safe by wearing your SFPC, your SCBA, and taking in your monitors or your meters with you to determine what type of uh, hazards are present. Also, you had the heads-up display on your face piece, which helped indicate any type of acidic environment or if the fluorine ion was present. You also reviewed your red light indicators on what the meters would tell you on how to interpret that data, and then you reacted to those red lights. You got out quickly because you saw that this is a dangerous environment. It wasn't safe for you to stay even with your SFPC and SCBA on. It was time to get out. So you reacted properly. And you realized through verification of information that this corrosive product had other qualities that were extremely dangerous. For instance, it was also poisonous and also a, a deadly material if contact uh, on the skin. So essentially your mission changed. It changed from your initial mission, which was to look for victims and to find out if there was indeed a leak. Your mission now would be a plumbing situation where you would go in with level A suits and you would do a, a slow type response and you do it safely to plug that leak or take care of the release. So in closing, this was an unknown protocol, an unknown algorithm, where you followed smart chart number five to take care of this. But you need to do it in a safe, effective manner so you go home safely. Until next month, Chemical of the Month, live well, think smart, and stay safe.